welcome to another episode of Hack Naked at Night. Yeah, it's a little cold in the workshop. It's uh, just finished snowing. It's about 22 degrees outside. That means it's about 22 degrees in the workshop. Uh, we have heat, but it takes literally all day to warm up. Yeah, not so good. So we've got a little spot set up in the basement, um, which, of course, where we are now. Uh, we also have the office, but uh, you know we sort of ran out of room in the office a little bit. Um, so we've got the spot down here in the basement. The basement is a balmy 57 and a half degrees right next to the servers, hence why we're wearing some vests and uh, rabbit ear hats and, and all that good stuff. So we're going to do uh, today, this time uh, for this month, we're going to do uh, learning how to solder. And you're probably saying, well, Larry, great for the maker stuff and, and really cool. But how does this relate to computer security? Well, how often do you, Darren, how often do we find uh, we've got a device that we want to, you know, own? And it requires some sort of soldering skills for us to get into some of the hardware, whether there be create serial cables. Oh, lots, lots, lots of serial cables uh, to connect and be able to dump memory and uh, things of that nature. So it's a good, it's a good uh, skill to have if you want to be uh, technologically inclined, yep. as we all, as we all do, um, in order to uh, take things like this and make them useful. Yep. So today. This month, we're going to learn how to solder. Okay, let's get to it. I have a cool hat. What we're going to be uh, doing here for our soldering demonstration is we're going to be doing a, uh, uh, a Wi-Fi shield that you can get from SparkFun that uh, then you can put onto your Arduino to give it uh, wireless uh, access. Uh, um, it's called the Wi-Fi shield, uh, sold by SparkFun, um, and you can get it there. What we're going to be soldering on are the headers that will allow us to tie into the, um, into the Uno and uh, go from there. So some things that just before we start, we've got all of our parts laid out that we need. Uh, we're using an uh, AU uh, 8, uh, 6, uh, 986 uh, soldering station, but any old um, soldering station will do. Uh, just get a $20 one from Radio Shack to start. Um, but where we do this uh, quite frequently, we've invested in some uh, in some heavier equipment. Um, this is uh, very hot, probably about 600 degrees right now to melt the solder. Um, also, we have our uh, sponge wetted that we use to blot off uh, any extra. Um, and then a step up from that, we do have uh, some uh, bronze, um, like steel wool, that's much better at uh, taking off the, um, the excess. Uh, so good, another good thing, nice clean work surface, uh, a lot of good light so you can see what you're doing um, and don't mess up. And then uh, last but not least, a bottle opener because you need to have beer. Mm. Things that you can get as you get further into this, uh, we have here uh, a third arm, which has two uh, alligator clips on it. Um, one's missing, but that's fine. We only need one usually. And a magnifying glass to help see the really fine uh, detail if, you're get, if you start getting into some of that. Um, if you have to like solder leads onto really, really small, tiny chips. Uh, that's what she said. I don't know. Uh, but that's a good thing to have. Um, we also have this, which is the pan of ice junior. Um, there's slots cut in it for that will hold uh, circuit boards for you. Again, acts as a third arm because you might be bringing wires in that you then need to solder and you need both hands free to uh, to be able to do that. So those are some uh, some other good things to have. One of the first things that you're going to need to learn once you first get your when you get your first soldering iron, uh, which mostly will consist of this bottom part here. Uh, this is the heating element. Is to uh, is how to tin the tip. Um, so the, what I do for this is I just take a uh, a length of uh, a length of solder, crumple it up, and then just melt it down into a nice little ball um, that you then can uh, melt melt and uh, get a nice good coating of tin on the tip of the uh, soldering iron. This may be kind of hard to see. Uh, on the camera, but this will help preserve the tip from being oxidized um, And you can see that I've used this for a while. So the whole upper part here is uh, kind of a brownish color now uh, Where it's oxidized, but this will help preserve your tips uh, longer and um, Help make soldering a lot easier uh, further down the road 
that we've decided to use to show off some uh, some how, how to solder is making a shield for the uh, Arduino Uno. Uh, the Arduino Uno has four banks of uh, pin headers, uh, two six pin headers down here and two eight pin headers here. Um, so we have the Wi-Fi shield, as mentioned before here, uh, from SparkFun that has holes for the headers, but they're not soldered in yet. So we have two six pin headers and two eight pin headers. To help us uh, with this, so when you first, you know, you think, oh, I'll just put these in and and solder them here. But as you can see, uh, these can move quite a bit, so there's a lot of room for error, um, and they really need to line up perfectly because you've got to get all of these to line up at the same time. To help us do that, we have uh, a pre-existing, which I think is a GPS shield, but it's already been soldered and already has all these pins here that we can attach to and use them as a guide. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take all of our headers and uh, line them up. Eight pin to eight pin, six pin to six pin. So put one of the eight pins there, another one there. Another one here. And another one here. So now you can see that we have all of our uh, header pins set on this pre existing shield. And then we could just take this shield here and set it right on top so that way all the holes line up. It takes a little patience to get it all to fit right. But it would, and it would be a lot harder to get them to fit if you didn't do this right, and some of the some of the holes were off. You can edit this later, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there we go. We've dropped the uh, we've dropped the header on that, or the shield on that has no headers yet, and all the legs here, uh, because they're sitting on this pre-existing header, are all nice and straight and uh, and ready for soldering. So now I'm ready to uh, start soldering uh, soldering uh, all these pins in. So you see that you have a little ring of metal, and then the leg that sticks out. So in order to solder this, we're going to come in on the side here with the soldering iron which is hot and that's going to heat the leg and the hole that's associated with it and bring in some solder here and just enough so that way you can fill in uh, the ring and you see that there's a uh, a seal there. So now um, we've we've soldered that leg to the proper uh, uh, slot for that. So the ring of metal there for the hole will then uh, relate to anything that's uh, wired up here on the board. Like for instance, you can see here that this leg here um, has some traces that run into the board and probably control some of the uh, the uh, Wi-Fi functionality of the board itself. Um, so now we're going to repeat this for all of the uh, all of the holes here, um, creating a nice good solder uh, hold for all the headers. We'll just take our time. It's a marathon, not a race or something like that. But so we don't want to put. See, the whole system needs to heat up be, to be able to take the solder properly. Every so often, I'll need to come off and, and uh, you know, give the tip a good cleaning because uh, it will get gummed up sometimes and things won't be working right. Love the smell of fresh solder at night. It's not good for you. Get a fume shield, a fume hood. Now, if you look above on my uh, above the heating element, that is a smoke thing, but it creates a lot of noise, and you wouldn't get to hear my beautiful voice, and it's kind of annoying, and I really don't care anyway. 
But for all of you at home, try this at home. Don't breathe the smoke. Don't inhale. That's what Bill Clinton said, right? That's right. Something like that. So you see, once you get into the groove of it, you can move along pretty quickly. Even with some guy with a camera jammed up your face. Yeah. It makes it kind of hard to see sometimes, but... The sacrifices I will make to teach you people how to solder. Alrighty, so there. We've done all the legs. They're all filled in with a nice good solder into the uh, into the circle. So I'll give the give the tip with another good cleaning, set it to the side. And remember that's about 600 degrees, so don't touch it. Uh, so I've also seen um, we we moved over to to using the uh, the pan of ice here. So the card sits here in a nice slot and holds it nicely for me, so it stays nice and still. So as I bring solder in, it wasn't like jumping around the table like that. Now that we're done soldering, it's uh, had some time to cool off. Just grab it and pull it away from the existing shield. So now we have the uh, all the pins in um, and the headers in all ready to go. So let me just take that over to uh, our Uno here and everything should just sit in nicely. So those headers then allow the pins to continue on down um, so you can still use all these pin functionality even though you've got a, uh, a shield device onto your uh, Arduino. So that's the project that we did and uh, I hope uh, it was helpful to learn how to do some soldering. Can we some freak? <laughs> All right, so when you really screw up doing some of the soldering, you really need to practice desoldering. So you can remove the solder and potentially remove the component. Maybe let's say you put it in the back, in backwards, you put it in uh, upside down, and, and you need to, to get some of this stuff fixed up. So what we've got is we've got a, a board from an old uh, Motorola surfboard cable modem. I yeah, don't have cable service anymore, so um, we're going to harvest this for some components, much like we would if we needed to do something. Because quite honestly, there's some great stuff. There's an Ethernet jack, there's a USB jack, um, there's power, there's a bunch of capacitors. Um, this may be a power regulator that we can use in some other projects, but and it's also a great way to practice uh, doing some desoldering. So in order to accomplish that, we've got a number of tools. The classic way to do that is uh, with this tool called a uh, solder sucker, and it's a spring-loaded mechanism with a plunger inside of this, and it uh, sucks air in through here. So you, you jack down on the, the button, and you press this, and it's supposed to spring back on you and create a vacuum. However, this one's actually kind of busted. It doesn't even stay together anymore. I, I actually don't even know why I've held onto it, but this is the way you used to do it. You used to take your soldering iron tip and you go in and you heat it up and then you suck it out well it, it really stinks you go through these tips because you melt them like crazy um, it's not fun you break stuff um, so go and invest in uh, a desoldering iron it's essentially the same thing it's a it's a soldering iron but with a tip with a circle in it and this whole circle gets hot and it's got this bulb on it so you, it's, a, it's a squeeze bulb so when you you're using it, you squeeze the bulb, you put it on this contact that you want to desolder, and you let go of the squeeze bulb, and it sucks the solder into away from the, the pins. Uh, so this is actually still heating up here, so we're going to have to come back for a minute. So great way to learn how to desolder, um, harvest some components for something potentially uh, for later use, and uh, you know, great for fixing uh, mistakes. And uh, we'll actually cover another method uh, in a minute here after we cover this one. So our desoldering bulb is... Uh, now nice and warm and we're gonna see if I've already started to make sure it was nice and warm We're gonna do a couple of these and we're gonna do something fairly dramatic to see what it sort of looks like So we're gonna, we're gonna depress the bulb to start Okay, and then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna put the tip over the pin And it's gonna melt all the solder and I like to, to, to move it around a little bit and make sure I get everything And then you let go of the bulb and it sucks all the solder right inside uh, the end of the tip So let's do this one right here and do that one again a little bit. You know, the only important things is when you press down on the bulb, um, 
before you uh, go back over here, don't do it over your, your work surface or your board, because what happens? Solder comes out of the end, and if you get it all over your board, you can potentially create some shorts and that type of stuff. All right, so we're going to go into this big one real here and, and just do something really dramatic and take this really big blob of solder off in one shot. And whoop. <laughs> Let's do one more of those because I just got my did my something I said not to do. Suck that all right up here. And uh, if we come over to the surface and we actually squirt this out, we'll see what happens. See, we get this big blob of molten solder that comes out. Last one I did just squirt it right out. Well, let's do one more and see if we can get a nice big squirt going on here. That's what she said. All right, ready? Okay, so yeah, you don't want that to come back out on your board uh, when you're doing it. So yeah, we've got most of the solder off on all of these, um, and uh, you know we should be uh, uh, be good to go to be able to probably remove this from the front side of the board. It might take a little prying and a little little bit of doing, but um, we'll see how it goes. Oh, I got another one right here. That's the important thing. Make sure you get all the connections before you try to remove it. Yeah, this one still looks like it's got a little bit of stuff going on. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, put this back on our stand so we don't burn anything. And yeah, sure enough, it's uh, it's pretty good on there. Actually, we've got some stuff on the front here, um, and those are actually going to be uh, kind of interesting to try to do. Let's see if we can get one of these. Yeah, not so much. This might be one of those ones that's sort of a, a lost cause. So, uh, that's okay, but it was more of just an example. So, if we want to take a look at some of the, the Ethernet and the USB ports, uh, those are actually pretty easy to do as well. So get that good heated up, remove some of that solder. And these are the uh, actual physical connections for the, the, the metal shielding on the outside. And uh, that's what's actually you know creating the connection to the board to hold it down. And then we've got the, the four pins for USB. Got those pretty good. Yeah, and we'll keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Like that one more time just to be on the safe side all right go over to the ethernet one again physical shielding on the outside and eight pins now you don't want to sit there too long with this on the board just like soldering because uh, you can potentially um, you know overheat some of the components and uh, you know actually damage them so the sort of the faster you can move along when you're doing this actually kind of the better go back and hit this one real quick all right good good so it might be a little warm uh, but Oh, almost there. So some of the other things that we'll find that we have to do is we have to get a uh, maybe a little screwdriver and stick it in there. Put it my drawer, see if I've got one, and uh, sort of get it between the component and the board. Do this real carefully because you don't want to damage anything. So we sort of got that wedged in there a little bit, and uh, we've got it creating a little resistance. And hopefully things will pop out a little bit better for us now. Okay. Yep, see, there we go. It was mostly just the uh, the resistance on the component. And maybe not. A little bit more. Okay. So it's a little bit of finesse, a little bit of patience for sure. And ooh, it's out. Sometimes it actually helps if you blow right through. And uh, yeah, well, all right. 
No big deal. I damaged that one because I didn't pull all the pins out all the way. So I actually left some of the pins behind. So yeah, it's a test thing. It's, it's something for us to, to be learning about. Um, I actually pulled some of the pins all the way through, so destroyed the Ethernet port. But you know what? That's why we're here learning. It's um, you know it's it's not perfect every time, but we can move on to the the USB. Let's see if we can do this one a little bit better. Again, patience. This one's not uh, removing some solder all that well. Okay, so. I know why. Why? You're lacking a cool hat. Ha! <laughs> Where's your cool hat, Larry? You got beer instead. I have beer and a cool hat. Mm. All right, and one of the last ways that we can uh, remove components from a board is by using uh, the hot air rework uh, portion of uh, our uh, soldering station. Uh, basically, it superheats air. It comes out of a little nozzle. You can actually have a wide nozzle. This one's fairly narrow, and that gets hot real fast. Um, this is about 375 degrees C. Oh, we're pushing just shy of 700 degrees Fahrenheit. And basically the way this works is it just uses hot air to heat up the solder. So if we take a look at some of these itty bitty teeny components right here, we'll blast a little bit of hot air and I'm gonna do something to sort of push it aside. And as simple as that. And now we move this little teeny piece that's about really teeny right there. And that's been removed from the board little resistor. We can use this to do some of the other stuff. So we talked about this uh, you know, thing that is potentially uh, a power regulator here. And uh, it's got this really big pad underneath it. So you kind of have to try to heat up the whole pad at once. And this one's going to be really difficult to do because you got to get this heated way up as using the board as a heat sink. Well, this one may not actually come off very well, but you get the idea. We can, you know, move this over to the capacitor here, which I'm just starting to melt the plastic on. So, not necessarily a great idea. So, it's really difficult to start doing some of this stuff. Uh, we've got some some LEDs over here that maybe we can get off, and uh, getting your fingers in the way of that is really not good. Let's get a different angle here. All right, now surface mount LED off. There, there. Let's see if we can do another one. Helps if you're actually pushing on the component you want to come off, but not the board. Yeah. Off. There we go. It actually blows right off because we're using a little bit of forceful air there. There we go. And there we go. So those actually went a little bit a little bit better. Hopefully I didn't burn too many of them. Because uh, yeah, it's gonna be uh, kind of difficult to do. All right.